I'm not gonna lie. Uh, probably you and maybe Kukazi are like the only two people that I can think of that I would actually kind of say that I fanboyed for in the past. Being able to play every kind of map that the game has to offer, and also being an amazing beast at this game in general, is why I think that White Wolf should be in the top 5 players of 2012. His longevity and continued top level ability and versatility has cemented him as one of the premier legends of the game. Becoming one of the best players in any game is challenging enough, but being able to keep that status for extended periods of time is something that only few can ever achieve. If you have followed us at any point in history, then it's likely that you're familiar with a player named Wolf Wolf Wolf. Not only is he among the greatest players of all time, but he's been among them for more than a decade. Some people may look at him now and think that he's fallen off, but that would be a rookie mistake. This is the story of an unfallen titan of Os who has continually upped the ante for nearly the entire history of the game and shows no signs of stopping. This is the story of Wub Wolf Wolf. Bartek Wilk was born in Boknia, Poland on March 2nd, 1995. As a kid, he spent time playing many PC games that he got from gaming magazines. Although he had no background in rhythm games, one of Wobblefolf's friends recommended Os, and he decided to give it a shot. He created his account on September 19th, 2008 under the name White Wolf and started playing often. Wobblefolf's Os sessions would last upward of 6 hours while he was in school and would run for even longer on the weekends. There were only a few thousand ranked maps by the start of 2009, and if Wobblefolf spent his time trying to play every single one of them. No matter the length, difficulty, or even quality, he would play the map and challenge himself to do better. Since total score was used as the ranking metric at the time, he would climb the rankings of the relatively small game and would reach top 50 in February of 2009. All of the repetition with awkward and often poorly timed maps helped lay the foundation of what made Wobblefolf into a living legend. Every time that he played through all of the ranked maps and ran out of content, he would just go back and start from square one, the first ranked map. This is something that he not only did then, but has been doing ever since then. Each iteration of the cycle improved his reading and consistency drastically. With this skill set, Wobblefolf was able to make a name for himself for his ability to sight read, or complete a map without playing it before, many of his full combos in 2009 and beyond. Throughout 2010, Wobblefolf would begin to show a much wider skill set than previously. He was able to play some of the fastest and most stamina intensive maps of the time and would become competition for the top players. The score that truly cemented his top player status was his hidden flashlight FC on Kambu de Tomate Sugu Tokaru towards the middle of the year. In the first annual top players vote, he made it to the number 17 spot, but would soon prove that he was beyond what most people thought. During this time period, the first OS tournament started popping up, and you were sure to see White Wolf competing and having some fun. He was able to achieve first place in what is widely considered the first official OS competition, Tag Tournament. Starting with the Tag Tournament in the first few OS World Cups, he would continually show good results against the other top players in the world, with his impeccable sight reading often aiding in his victory. Though he did win first place in Tag Tournament, the Polish team didn't quite have what it took at this time to do the same with the World Cups. Continuing into late 2011 and early 2012, alongside the tournaments, White Wolf would keep with his usual cycle of playing the old maps again to refine his skills before setting increasingly incredible scores. Near the end of 2011, after a gradual rise, White Wolf found himself surpassing everyone for the first time to reach number one score rank in the world, and would continue to hold this for a while. Due to the competitive nature of the ranking, new maps constantly being added to play, and how far ahead some of the players were already, this position was especially hard to reach and maintain. Most of this changed in April of 2012 though, with the introduction of PPV1 as the new official ranking system, which more favored placing highly and performing well on more difficult and highly contested maps. Showing just how dominant he was, not only in regards to score, White Wolf was placed at rank number one again in the new system, just barely ahead of Cookie Z. Although the ranking was a challenge to stay on top of, White Wolf didn't mind much and would continue his usual gameplay, playing older maps again and brand new maps alike. His status in the community meant there were a lot of eyes on him and his plays. Many people wanted to see him in action and know how he played, while a few other people would claim that he was too good and that he had to be cheating. 
To please both sides, and for his own enjoyment, he opened his first YouTube channel, White Cherry 95 where he would upload videos of several of his O's plays, many including a hand cam to show his aim and tapping. Late 2012 to 2013 would see the usual of White Wolf taking many first places and trying challenging maps. May of 2013 would see a transformation of sorts. White Wolf decided to change his username on OS to Wubbleful, since the prior was generic and hard to specifically search for, whereas the new unique username could be tied just to him. Along with the name change in-game, he would also open brand new accounts with the name on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and other platforms. Since he already had built somewhat of an audience on his old YouTube channel, his new one was able to grow quickly and started to attract more attention than before. One thing that would bring many new eyes to his channel were live plays he would upload of his scores that would place near the top of leaderboards on extremely popular and highly contested maps. You would think that a change in the ranking system as major as that of PPV2 in February 2014 would be a big deal to one of the top players in the world, but Wobbuffolf didn't pay it much attention. To him, it was just changing the ranking from a grinding system to a speed system, but didn't really change his position in the rankings that much. He started out at rank number 2 in the world, but would end up being passed up by up-and-coming players whose aptitude for double time was favored in the new algorithm. The rise of new number 1 players like Rurucci, Sayonarabai, and HVIC225 pushed him to go all-in on learning to read AR 10.3 and practice speed to expand his skill set even further. If anything, this change introduced a new way to play and new goals for Wobblefolf alongside his old ways. The rest of the year would see him once again going through old maps, playing challenging maps, and taking number ones, and practicing the high AR and fast maps he wasn't able to do before. Apart from Solo, 2014 was quite the tournament year for Wobblefolf as well. In that year's OS World Cup, Team Poland made it to the Grand Finals, but lost to Japan, which earned him a second profile badge and three months of supporter for the second place finish. Wolfwolf was slowly working his way back up the rankings once again throughout late 2014 and early 2015. Both Sayonara Bai and Verucci had gone inactive, so gaining his spot back was only a matter of working up to how much PP they had. Just from playing normally, he passed both with relative ease and ended up right back at number 2, but Wolfwolf wasn't satisfied with just that. Only one person stood in the way of achieving number 1 global rank once again. HVIC225 had held the position since August of 2014 and held the record for highest PP play in the whole game, so somehow gaining enough PP to pass him would be hard. Using a combination of both insanely good scores and some of the newly discovered farm maps, he gained multiple high 400 PP scores which with waiting allowed him to reach the number one spot on February 6, 2015. Truly solidifying his lead, a change to the ranking algorithm was made a few days later to nerf high OD, which made him the only person to have over 9000 PP and widened the gap between him and the rest of the world to almost 200 PP. At this point, Wolfwolf had reached number 1 in every ranking system the game has ever had. Score, PPV1, and now PPV2. Around late spring, the race for high PP plays would really move into gear. Wolfwolf had lost his number one spot and he joined this battle to compete once again with HVIC225 who now had a comfortable lead. Another competitor was Index whose unparalleled hard rock ability allowed him to shoot all the way up to number three, challenging Wolfwolf's own spot. The PP record sat at 560 PP by HVIC225, but Index had shown that much higher was possible before his 609 PP play had been disqualified. With each player using their most extraordinary skill set to push the PP boundary, Wobblefolf turned to what he knew best. There was huge potential for PP on some older maps with very high CS, which was his specialty, so he tried out many maps he knew, attempting to gain massive amounts of PP. On April 4th, 2015, Wobblefolf played Sakura Kagetsu with Double Time and Hard Rock, a map with a final circle size of 7.8, and full comboed it for an incredibly high 603 PP. At the time, the only, and technically first, 600 PP play. Unfortunately for him, the amounts of points that these maps would give was deemed as too much, and just a few days after his accomplishment, extremely high CS maps were nerfed, turning his record play into a still sizable 524 PP. The race concluded with Index setting the final first 600 PP once again at the end of April and taking the number 2 spot from Wobblefolf soon after. The next few months, Wobblefolf would lie dormant while more players passed him in rank. 
He wasn't even the highest ranked player in his own country anymore after newcomer Rathis passed him in PP. None of this discouraged him though, and just like every year prior, he would make his return in preparation for the OS World Cup. To show off just what he was still made of, Wobbuffle started attempting many high PP plays with Hard Rock. The date was November 3rd, 2015, and Wobbuffle had just found his next goal, FC Defenders with Hard Rock. On stream, he was getting very consistently good runs, so he knew that he would be able to pull it off if he kept trying. Retry after retry, he would keep gaining viewers since the map had a massive PP gain potential. He hit 3,000 plus viewers on Twitch near the end of his attempts. The final attempt was routine at first, but he didn't break on the stream section like before. Playing all the way through the ending with massive nerves, he choked the accuracy but was still able to clutch the FC. In a time when most top players still relied on double time to rise through the rankings, Wobbuffle showed that Hard Rock only was still viable if you had the skill required. Wobbuffle was now the holder of the highest PP play, sitting at 667 PP, just one point above the previous record. By mid-2016, despite all of his previous efforts, Wobbuffolf had almost completely stopped actively trying to gain ranks and mostly focused on getting new number one scores instead. This sadly resulted in major rank decay as many players were able to pass him while he barely gained PP. In June, for the first time since his rise in 2010, Wobbuffolf fell out of the top 10 players and wouldn't return. For nearly 6 years and across 3 different ranking metrics, he was able to call the top 10 home, but for once, he decided to embrace the decay. Some people feared that the end of his story was coming up soon and he had finally fallen off, but Wolfwolf assured them that he just didn't want to farm. For the next year or so, he unsurprisingly would continue to do his usual. He streamed on Twitch often, uploaded YouTube videos often, and would still play the game often. Wolf may have been losing ranks throughout 2017, but he definitely wasn't losing tournaments. Towards the end of the year, the World Cup rolled around and he started preparing like usual. He had played for Poland every single year, but they had never taken home the gold, only a silver in 2014 and bronze in 2015. This time was different. Poland now had many new players who had become top players on their own and were ready to play for their country on the world stage. Wolf was always an incredible tournament player, so as long as everyone else was prepared, then he could carry them to victory. Sweeping through the winner's bracket, Poland were able to knock down two-time world champions Team United States and keep going. The grand finals of OWC 2017 saw Poland face the US once more, and in the final moments, a sudden clutch from Wolf is what brought the team to victory. Ecstatic that he had finally, after 8 years, become a world champion, Wobbuffolf and the rest of the team celebrated. He had shown once again that he is always going to be one of the best players in the world, and that won't change. Since then, Wobbuffolf has continued to see success in the game. He has won profile badges for his first place finishes in OS Duel Cup 3, Game On 2018, and Kanyo Cup, alongside other great tournament showings. On the flip side, he's been able to gain PP from playing new maps and changes to the PP system, but many players continue to pass him since he still doesn't farm often. Currently, he sits just above rank number 100, the lowest rank he has been at since early 2009, but he doesn't seem to mind at all. He hasn't uploaded to his YouTube channel, which has been the most popular OS channel since 2013, in over a year. Luckily, Wolfwolf streams on Twitch every few weeks and still has a very large following there as well. Keeping in touch with the community in another way, he has also attended many OS meetups, like Guangzhou Yaka and Kavo's OS event. Wobbuffolf has been a staple of the OS community for more than a decade and has awed multiple generations of players with his ability. Today he is still recognized as one of the greatest players of all time, just as he has been for years. Wobbuffolf's reading and consistency alone are what every top player strives to match. His years of play have allowed him to accumulate a current total of 1700 plus first places on maps, which he used to lead the world in. On top of all this, he continues to play the game after 11 years and is still becoming better. He has served as an inspiration and favorite player to thousands of new players and top players alike. His skill level and dedication to his craft are beyond that of almost all players, which is what sets him apart as one of the greats. His history is a reminder to all that no matter what happens, Wobbuffolf remains an everlasting legend of Os. 
I played this game eight years, Alice, <laughs> and I finally got something out <laughs> of it. <laughs> 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 Like me this, like me that. Who's afraid of the big white?